Hmm. What to buy my brother for Christmas? He likes Star Wars, and I don't think he has the new trilogy yet. I wonder if any of the stores are having any sales or specials on or something like that where it's Christmas. Hey, Google, tell me about the uh, Star Wars holiday specials. According to Wikipedia, the Star Wars Holiday Special is a 1978 American television special set in the universe of the Star Wars science fiction media franchise. What? Directed by hey, Steve Google. Binder. There's no such thing as a Star Wars Holiday Special. No way. That would be absolutely stupid. <coughs> I find your lack of faith disturbing. Hey everyone, it's Good Times with Bad Movies. I'm your host, Tim, joined by my wonderful co-host, Paul. Paul, how you doing? I am fantastic, Tim. How are you, sir? Uh, I'm great. So it's December, and like we did with our Halloween specials, we are also going to cover a few Christmas specials this year. And our first one on the list is going to be Star Wars The Holiday Special. Came out in 1978 on CBS, produced by 20th Century Fox Films. Directed by Steve Binder and five different writers. Okay, so that that actually explains some of this. But did, did like did, did did kids did kids write this? Like who who wrote this? George Lucas was at this point filming The Empire Strikes Back, the second Star Wars movie. This movie, this holiday special, comes out right a year after the first Star Wars movie, and by this point, he was already in the works filming the sequel, The Empire Strikes Back. This this movie, this holiday special. Looks uh, like they took B-roll footage from Star Wars, uh, as well as like side little three-second clips from the original movie that they thought that no one would notice, like just Darth Vader walking down a hallway talking to someone. Quite possibly. I'm not really sure how this actually came to be. George, or Well, it said that George Lucas had a whole story written, but by the time it went through these writers, so much of it was chopped out. And what we have here, what you see on the screen is what was left of the story. Uh, George Lucas, because of the sequel, he actually didn't have much, much of a hand in the production of the movie. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I, I just, like what they made bank off this anyway. So it's not like it matters, but. I'm not sure how much money they made. So this only aired once. This aired on that special that one night and was never replicated. There's never been an, a version of it that's been you, that people can buy. George Lucas has gone well out of his way to never let this see the light of day, <laughs> except for the except for the cartoon. The cartoon is the only portion of it that has that has been actually, you know, I guess been made available for the public. I, I mean, I, I just a couple of things there. I mean, I would have burned it all. But um, it's funny that George Lucas, this this billionaire, goes to this these far lengths to just silence this and net th let this never see the light of day and then like bob from cheek to wog to tape this on his on his vhs and just it's on youtube now that's exactly and those are the only versions ex <laughs> that exist the only versions that people usually see these days are probably like six sixth generation vhs copies yeah i mean this is this this it says like ohio or something on it right so it almost fell in the legend of like legend or myth until like the early 90s when people started actually uh, trading it and, and selling them at uh, conventions. Um, so let me let me ask you, because you you're uh, you're fairly well versed in the Star Wars realm, right? Reasonably well. I'm sure there's a lot of people that would put me to shame, so I'm not going to claim to be an expert. But I know I've seen every movie and I know a fair amount about it. So is it is it true? Because I had heard this. I don't know if this is true or not. But is it true that they were really, really high, like all the actors when they made the first movie? Or is that just a myth? Those, those are rumors that I've heard, but I don't think there's ever been anybody from the production or staff that have come forth and, forth and been like, oh, yeah, we were all stoned out of our trees. OK, OK. Because, I mean, like <laughs> it would at least explain this movie, but it's the late 70s. So, you know, take what you will. It wouldn't <laughs> surprise me if everybody was. Fair enough. I just OK, like you think about this, too. This is the late 70s. There's like three to five channels that are, you know, most people have for TV. If this was one of the things that came on my three to five channels as a kid, I would have been so pissed off. <laughs> like <laughs> this was well, they should have. They, it said it said that the Hulk was supposed to come on that night. And honestly, they should have done that. They should have just been like, <laughs> you know what? Forget it. Just put this put the Hulk back on. Well, when you consider the amount of buzz 
and just how big Star Wars was in pulp culture in 1978, a year later, there's probably so many people just clamoring for any kind of Star Wars material to come out. And yeah, I guess. this is what they got for Christmas. Yeah, you got a big lump of dump in your, your stocking, really. I was trying to think of different ways to convey just how horrible this is. And I really, without just, just trying to describe this as best as I can, it's really hard for people to get an image of this. Like, I recommend anybody, I challenge anybody to sit through this movie. In one sitting. Yeah, in one sitting. Because I'll say this was definitely the most laborious of of a watch that we've that I felt we've done so far. Yeah, I I feel I I think so. This was like trying to run up one of those walls that you know like it's on on American Ninja those giant ran- the half pipe walls. It was kind of like trying to run up that. It was just you just you couldn't get through this. You get tired and winded within five minutes. Yeah, this is this is just because this is we're as we go through this we're gonna see this is basically just skits that are supposed to be telling a story. Um, well, they they strip the they they strip what story that was there down to it being a variety show. Yeah, that's that's just basically just guests show up and sing songs. There's a lot of, there's a lot of musical uh, numbers in this Star Wars uh, Christmas special, and it doesn't really have anything to do with Christmas. I don't really know what this is. Christmas is even isn't even mentioned in this. It's Life Day, which I, I and I'm going to assume that that's probably due to Star Wars mass appeal around the world. So maybe just to not pick one holiday specific they went the safe route and called it life day who doesn't who's against life day right (laughs) i guess so i just i just i thought that i thought life day was like someone's birthday i thought it was the kid's birthday at first from what i read life day is a celebration that is i guess it's celebrated around the the galaxy and oh, so it's not just on Endor. Well, I don't know. I, I guess it's it, the, this year the Wookiees hosted it. Now, I don't know if that's just part of the story that got cut away because it, it appears as though only the Wookiees um, celebrate Life Day in this. And and of course, the, the main Star Wars cast, they, they celebrate it with them. Well, yeah, sort of. So maybe we should just get into this and just plow through this uh, this dumpster fire. Unlike what we're all used to with most Star Wars movies, we don't get a credit crawl here or like, you know, the story crawl at the very beginning that gives you a rundown. Or if there is one, there there wasn't it wasn't available on the versions that we had. So as soon as we see the big, large Star Wars words on the screen, we get an announcer very similar to Saturday Night Live, where he's just kind of doing a roll a roll call of all of the actors that are in the movie, uh, you know, Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher and uh, Harrison Ford and basically the main Star Wars characters that you know. And then we also get quite a few appearances by from some famous Hollywood stars that were famous at that time, like uh, B. Arthur from the Golden Girls. Golden Girls. And this was our, this was before the Golden Girls. Art Carney. <laughs> Uh, he's the guy who plays uh, Ralph Cramden in the uh, the Honeymooners. Norton. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Diane Carroll, who is I don't know, a famous singer at that time, and she was also on Dynasty. That's like a, it's a soap opera in the '80s, I believe. Okay. Yeah, I've heard of that show. Um, Jefferson Starship. <laughs> they they're there to <laughs> perform a song. And do you think I for some reason I feel like the only reason they are in this or why they were chosen. Is because Starship is in their band is in their band title name. Wow, actually that makes a lot of sense because I was trying to figure that out. I'm like, why the hell is Jefferson Starship in this? Yeah, and it's it's like that's like I think it's a couple years before they were just Starship, right? And they built this city on rock and roll. So we're immediately thrown into some Star Wars stock footage from the original movie of uh, some Imperial ships, Starships chasing the Millennium Falcon with uh, Chewie and Han Solo inside running away and. Chewie's worried that he's not going to get home for Life Day. Han Solo assures him that, you know, we're going to get there. He hasn't missed one yet. And all the while they're being shot at. And that's what we get there. It's basically five seconds. And it looks like like the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon is very different from the movie. This looks like they are in just like a little box. Something that you would see in a play. You know why, though? Yeah, because um, we're used to as well, since when George Lucas went back and he digitized all his movies, they touched everything up, too. Right. So oh, if you no. look at the actual <laughs> original, what I'm saying, if you look at the actual original Star Wars, like an actual copy of the like even a VHS before George Lucas got his hands on it again, 
you can see like it's still it's still kind of rough, right? I mean, I know this is this is not the same, but it just looks like this is more like they just slapped this together, didn't really they kind of used some sets and made it whatever, and then just shoved out into worlds. After we see that quick little chase, we are now at Kashyyyk, and that's where uh, all the Wookiees live. That's the I planet. Thought, it's not Endor? No. Andor, Andor is where the the uh, Ewoks live. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. I thought the Wookies. I thought the Wookies live with the Ewoks, though. So. Uh, I don't think so. At the, at this point, there was no Ewoks. That's not until the third till the third movie. That's not until like four or five years later. I'm definitely not deep cut Star Wars nerd. I don't know this stuff. I know enough, but not that much. Yeah. Now, now they're on Kashyyyk, and they appear to be living in a giant treehouse because I guess the Wookies live in trees. Can, can I ask you? Um, because. So, I, first of all, I didn't even know Chewie had a family. Okay, I thought Chewie was just out in the world doing his thing with Han. Nobody nobody did until this movie. Yeah, so, like, this kind of makes Chewie look like a, a kind of a bad father, first of all, I think. Because I'm like, what the hell is he doing? Why is he not just hanging out with his family and, and living a normal life? He's out almost getting shot and, and murdered every, every, every 30 seconds. But then, also, I'm wondering, too. Because these guys all have different names, like the the, the grandpa. Yeah, I want to. Yeah, I want to mention that you got their names. So the grandpa, his name I think is Itchy, right? And then the kid's name is Lumpy. Yeah, he's Lumpy. And the the mom is like Nala or Mala, Mala. or Mala. Okay, so is is their last name Baka? Like Itchy Baka, Lumpy Baka. Oh no, I don't think so. I think it's. I think though. I don't. I don't think Wookies have last names. <laughs> Okay, I was just his name. His name is just Chewbacca, and then Lumpy and Itchy and Mala. I'm not sure where these names came from. Like that's one of these things I have to assume George Lucas had no part in. Because why in the world would you have all these kind of like creative, creative, Lumpy? yeah, creative alien <laughs> names, and you name them Lumpy and Itchy, <laughs> and itchy. like they're like they're re- rejects from the Seven Dwarfs or something. Itchy Baka sounds like it's a funny name. Itchy Baka. I got an Itchy Baka. You got a Lumpy Baka. I ain't no mala baka girl. <laughs> Something like that. You know, this is r- really, really strange. So I, I, I have a clip here because I think there's just no way I can do justice to have the viewers or the listeners know exactly what this first 10 minutes of this movie sounds like. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is a great point, actually. You sh- I'm glad you brought this up, Tim. Okay. So in case, in case you haven't caught on by now, of all the Star Wars characters that a special could have been based on, this is mostly based on Chewbacca's family. I don't believe ever since that this special that Chewbacca's family has ever been referenced. I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, you would think. We already know that Wookiees don't speak English. <laughs> now, you would think that they might provide some captions. <laughs> for the viewers at home, but they actually don't do that. What we get is a whole bunch of Wookiee noises and non-stop. So I'm just going to give you a little taste, and I am not exaggerating this. This is what you listen to for probably, I would say, close to a solid half hour of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is that? I have no idea, but that's... I mean, it's it's kind of creepy. It sounds like an animal is dying. That's really what this sounds like. It sounds horrifying. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny because you, people usually adore Chewbacca's noise, like his the noises that he makes. But I think it's because it's in such small doses in the movies. And then, uh, so I also had a question, too. Um was Chewbacca's family originally not supposed to be horrifying? Because they are horrifying in every way. Yeah, they're they are abs- they are terrifying. Especially Itchy, this old man. This is like he's he's a horrible grandpa. He just yells at this little. Well, it seems like he's yelling at this little kid the whole time. You can't. This is so hard with this movie. Um, this Christmas special, whatever the hell it is. It's like it's just it's charades with shrieking animals. It is. It's so it's so obnoxious. How how is this for kids? This is like this is be, I mean I guess I don't know there was like weird clowns and stuff like that happening in the seventies so I guess it's kind of like up there. But I just what their what their thoughts of 
um, something that would be, you know, acceptable for kids and entertaining for kids and not creepy and horrifying. It's like, it's really weird. Yeah, it is really scary. I think we're definitely going to put an image up of. Um, oh, we got We got to post uh, what these things look like. Yeah, of Mala smiling. So anyways, we got, we got to get back to what's going on here. And we can quickly describe this. Lumpy is running around with, get this, Star Wars toys. <laughs> Well, it's like a, it's like a, an X and when an, an X wing, a tie fighter, a tie fighter. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. It's a bunch of tie fighters, and his father, or his grandfather Itchy, is putting one together, and Lumpy is kind of just running around like a little kid, flying him through the air and making <laughs> starship noises, until his father kind of or his grandfather gets a little bit cranky with it and makes him stop, and then Lumpy goes over and argues with his mother about whether or not he can have a cookie, and he just ends up stealing one anyways. And then he runs outside of the house and starts, like, by the way, the whole time you're watching this, you're kind of just watching this, wondering what the hell he's trying to do or what his next move is, because you're just hearing this Wookiee gibberish constantly. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, he wanders outside and you're just wondering, well, I wonder what he's going to do. So he climbs up on the railing of this treehouse and this treehouse is like 100 feet in the air. This is like a humongous tree. And he just starts balancing on it. And you're kind of worried that he might fall, but he doesn't fall. And then that's over. <laughs> and it's like just all these pointless things. Yeah. And so it looks like um, I guess the, it looks like part of the narrative, too, is that Mala his his wife. This is Harry, his Harry Baca. She uh, <laughs> she uh, she's she's quite worried that Chewbacca is not home for life day right now because she goes over. She goes over to this mantle, picks up a picture of Chewbacca and. And then uh, Itchy, I think it's, yeah, the, the grandpa, he comes by and she gives him a little <laughs> and shows him that she's kind of like worried about, she's worried about him. And, you know, it's, he sort of gives her a little <laughs> and a pat in the back and then sends her off and she goes off into the kitchen and she's cooking and she's making dinner. And it looks like um, Lumpy comes in now <laughs> and grandpa pulls out uh, a little cassette. I guess that's what this is, like an eight track or something, because this is still the seventies, but it's still future. Well, no, this is the future. That's not an eight track. It's it's seventies. It's well, it's 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 space eight track. Yeah, I don't know what this is. It's space track. Oh, it's a CD. Well, let's let's say it's a CD. That's a future. It's a compact disc. It does look more like an eight track. It looks like a tape recorder, though. Yeah. This is like yeah, because this this table they go over to is basically, um, like those old little tabletop video game looking tables. It's like it's like a little square. With, like, uh, tape recorders on it. The, what, what that is, is in the very first movie, uh, there is, like, a, I guess the equivalent of a chess set, where a whole bunch of monsters on this set are playing with each other, holog- hologram ones, and they use that same prop for this scene here. Only, instead of monsters and, like, a chess-type game, we get a, a Cirque du Soleil performance with tiny <laughs> little trapeze artists and stuff. And, honestly, it's not even that impressive. They're just, like, walking around and dancing and juggling um, and playing little like flutes and stuff and doing <laughs> handstands, like something you'd see out of the movie, bring it on or a cheerleader squad. They, they look like Dr. Seuss characters. Yeah, they do. They, and, and, and I gotta say the one guy that comes out, he is this green guy and he's got like a feather going up his ass and <laughs> it's, it's this, it goes like three feet over his head and, uh, and he's all green, but he has a really dark beard and he's got a bald head. It's, it's so, it's so creepy. It's, it's. I, it, it really looks like a, a weird Dr. Seuss character blended with like a man. And I don't know how, again, how this is supposed to be for kids. And, and he, they just, he just starts playing his little horn. I mean, the, we're going to get to some parts later on here that I definitely questioned whether this was for kids. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Exactly. Oh yeah. yeah grandpa. So Mala is over at her, uh, I don't know. I'm going to call it a Commodore 64. It's like, yeah, that's yeah, exactly. That's exactly what this <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah, It's like, you know, one of the oldest, little computers that you've ever seen and there is a screen on the computer however they don't use that screen the screen the the screen for the computer is actually just this it's a blue screen hanging behind the hanging on the wall behind them so but you know maybe back in 1978 that looks really futuristic i don't know so Mala is just typing in a whole bunch of X's and O's on the computer, and that tells us that there are no starships within the vicinity. And she's disappointed because she knows that Chewie is on the Millennium, Millennium Falcon with Han Solo. So we get some sad music, which we get in this movie constantly, just random sad music. <laughs> and for, at that point, they decide that they should contact Luke, Luke Skywalker. So they contact Luke Skywalker, 
uh, he appears on the screen in his garage, I guess, fixing uh, an engine. He just calls it an engine. And R2-D2 is there with him, beeping and booping and all that kind of stuff. And Luke can't speak Wookiee talk either. <laughs> Wookiee speak. Wookiee speech. What do you call it? Uh, I don't know what they call it. Wookiee. What would we call that? Wookiee-ish? Uh, Wookiee? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Luke doesn't speak Wookiee. So he's playing the same guessing game that we are when they're talking to him, and they're just making all these grunts and groans, and he's like, oh, <laughs> where's Chewbacca? Can you put him on? One of them runs and grabs a picture of Chewbacca and shows it to Luke, and he goes, oh, yeah, that's a picture of Chewbacca. Bring him to the screen. I want to see him. And then they, then they all kind of groan and make what are supposed to be unhappy faces, but they all look so darn gross as it is that you can't really tell what expression they have on their face but anyways luke clues in that uh they're looking for chewbacca and he's late for life day i'm just wondering like i'm just sitting here thinking he can't understand a wookie right but he can understand a robot that beeps and boops well how does that make any sense how does he understand what a beep boop is and he doesn't understand what a is? how does he understand any of that I would say that they it's easier to understand beeps and boops, much like Morse, because at least you can do Morse code. <laughs> you don't know that. It's not even Morse code. When, it, when, it, when R2 gets excited, he goes, wow, that's his noise. Oh, yeah, that's what happens when he gets hurt. They're not going to do Morse code when you scream. Yeah, but they're just beeps and bops, a beep and a bop. It's not the same as, as, a, as a beep, 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 you know? It's just a beep and a bop. That's all I'm saying. And also, can it, it, like, someone someone said, I don't want to steal this, but, like, again, one of the comments, someone said, Mark Hamill looks like Ellen DeGeneres here. And I got to say, like, damn. He looks like a Ken doll. <laughs> he looks, like, like seriously. He looks... His, that is spot on. The makeup job that he has yes. in this is absurd. Like, he looks <laughs> like he has so much makeup on his face. He's so shiny and clean. His His hair is extra blonde. It's just really, it's a really odd look for Luke after you've just seen the first Star Wars movie. Yeah, well, it's just, it's, it's like they just took Mark Hamill and they were like, just quick, put some makeup on him real quick and some weird o overalls and just stand in front of this thing while it smokes and just pretend to have a wrench and beep boop at this guy. And you know what's going on. He, he could have been really high too. I still maintain that. <laughs> Allegedly. So Luke is trying to cheer up Mala. And I'm going to play you a clip here of the way he's talking. And we'll put up an image of what Mala looks like when she smiles uh, on our social media. So check that out. And here's the clip. Come on, Mala. Let's see a little smile. <laughs> Come on. There, that's better. <laughs> oh, man. If that isn't one of the scariest things you've ever seen. Like when she's when she smiles, that is that's hideous. It's creepy. It's horrible. It looks like it looks like honestly, looking at her, it was like it's kind of like Garth from Wayne's World with like a, a weird face, hairy face muzzle. That's what he looks like. That's what she looks like. But it's like I'm sorry, Dana Carvey, it just looks really creepy. Like a really creepy version of that. So Luke is saying, I think I'm almost done now. The engines, uh, the engine should be good now. And then no sooner. R2-D2 does something and steam just starts flying everywhere and we get a, oh, R2-D2, and then he has to say goodbye and leaves. So that was pointless. The point was probably that uh, Mark Hamill was contractually obligated to be in this and he filled out his, his uh, contract. I believe that's actually the true story for everybody in this film, Liter li for, for real. Oh, I, I thousand, dude. When we see, well, when we get to the end of this, when you see Han Solo, he he literally does look pissed off. So, Mala goes over to her Commodore 64, and instead of putting in X's and O's this time, she puts in a bunch of little numbers and weird digits, and she's going to get patched into the local trading post. This is where we meet Art Kearney, and his name in this, he's a character named Sean Don. And he, <laughs> <laughs> really? And he, yeah, that's his name, Sean like, Don. Like the, okay, okay, that's like yeah. the champagne. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. So, <laughs> I guess the purpose of this scene is just for us to know that the Imperial fleet are searching for the rebels, Chewie and uh, Han Solo. And this is really odd. There's there's a lot of parts <laughs> in this movie 
Oh gosh, I don't know where to start first. Okay, let's start with how the Imperial Guard sounds. Well, can we can we just start with what he's wearing? Yeah, okay. Let's start with what yeah, what he's wearing. So this is actually one of the suits <laughs> from Star Wars. However, this one doesn't look like one like the ones that I'm used to seeing. It, well, you, I think I think when they're in the command little areas and there's guys sitting there, I think some of those guys have these weird helmets on. I could be wrong, but this guy, this helmet, this guy is wearing, looks more like the Spaceballs Darth Vader helmet. It does. Like that's exactly. It's just an oversized. It's 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 somewhere between it's somewhere between like a samurai helmet and a Darth Vader helmet because Darth Vader's helmet is kind of like a samurai helmet. Uh, this is like a giant version of that, and it's it's like I said, it, lo- this, it looks like Spaceballs. Sean Don is basically just trying to peddle him some different items that he has in his Wookiee trading post, and he says, "I have all the best things that men and Wookies like," and he picks up this tiny little pocket-sized fish aquarium, <laughs> and he shows that. He goes, "Check it out. They love this." <laughs> and. <laughs> And I'm just going to play you a clip of the response that we get from the uh, in, this Imperial Guard. I hate fish. <laughs> I hate fish. <laughs> so that's what we learned about that Imperial Guard. And his voice switches in between talking like uh, Hal from Space Odyssey 2001. Like he has a very calm way of speaking. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm just here to help you. <laughs> and then the, but that the next moment he sounds like Skeletor like don't you bother me now leave me alone hey man yeah that was pretty good <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and then could, could I just could I just say real quick here too the the set for this trade post it re- this really does look like a kid's show because it's just it's like Sesame Street that's what that's what this looks like it's like there's that one shelf behind him and it's got some stuff on it and like a couple of weird little tubes with like some colors in them and then there's just a table with like something that looks almost like a toaster and some bits of glass and some electronic junk and a fish tank that's all that's there like this is not they really didn't go yeah it's a pile of junk yeah they just didn't really go far in this they didn't they just this really does seem like they just were like it's like 12 it's like three weeks till christmas you guys want to make something Yeah, yeah, yeah and they just made something that's really what this seems like to me i think that's probably not too far from the truth (laughs) chewbacca's family are watching this same scene that we are through their Commodore 64. And every now and then, Sean Don here will <laughs> sort of look look at the screen and he starts talking to Mala. And he's trying to hide from the Imperial Guard that he's reassuring Mala that Chewbacca is on his way. And he says to Mala, he goes, oh, hi, Mala. I know you're looking for that shaggy rug carpet, huh? <laughs> Well, don't you worry. It's especially made for you. Four planets away by an old lady. She made it all by herself. You might say she did it by hand. Solo. (laughs) Yeah, and if he couldn't have been any more or less subtle, he then says, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? (laughs) Totally inconspicuous. Just nothing's going on here. You know, nothing to see. And then we get the appearance of Darth Vader, who is walking down the hall and he tells everyone to find Han Solo and Chewbacca. And this this honestly seems like they just cut again part of the him walking through the hallway in the first movie and they just got James Earl Jones to come in and overdub something else. I would I I'd say that's probably exactly what it is. Cuz this actually looks produced. The rest of it looks horrible. Yeah. And this is the only appearance of Darth Vader that we get in this movie. Yeah, what was the point of this? I don't know. They're fo- they're they're for furthering what they call a story. My, my guess, you know what I actually just think about this now? It's probably that they could say all these people were going to be in the special. They're just like, oh, Luke's going to be in it and Darth Vader's going to be in it. Even though they didn't tell you, they're only going to be in this for two seconds. So you watch it. Yeah, you cry. And then when you see it, you cry again. Something like that. I don't know. Back at the Wookiee house, uh, Mala is, I guess, going to make a life day supper and she puts a cooking show on her TV and we get one of our first appearances by uh, Henry Corman for people who don't know him. He's actually a really funny guy. He was on the uh, Carol Burnett show. Oh, okay. You know, you know who this guy, you ever, have you ever seen that BB? It's a BBC show. Um, it's called Mrs. Brown's boys. Yes. And it, yeah, that's what the, the host of this cooking show looks like. If you put this weird gold Brown paint on her and a robot suit, this, this is like a really creepy looking person. 
This this is creepy, but I'm pretty sure what they're actually doing here is a parody of Julia Childs. Julia Child. I can't remember what her last name is, but she's that famous that famous cook, and she's like, "Oh, the joy of cooking," and talks like that. Oh, really? Yeah. This is a it's, this is a creepy. This is like nightmarish. What we're watching here. This is like it's it's. I can't believe. Again, this is made for kids. That's what this whole movie should have been called. And you know what's really creepy, too? The image of Mala, this giant Wookiee, jumping up and down and stirring this pot, watching it, and, like, this that, this cringy smile that she has on her face. I don't know. This is nightmare fuel. This is, it's, it, this is like an acid trip sort of special. I don't know. It's like a variety show acid trip. There's just, like, all kinds of weird non sequitur stuff going on scene to scene. So, yeah, now Sean Don shows up. And he kind of just shows up and he's like, yeah, so I'm here to bring you the, um, oh, what do you going to call it, uh, proton packs? And it seems like he genuinely forgot what his lines were. Maybe. Yeah, that, that could have been it, actually. I mean. Yeah, Paul, what were the uh, backpacks that the Ghostbusters wore? What were they called? Uh, was it a, a helium pack or carbon pack? No, I think it. Pro, proton. Pro- was it a proton pack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th- I think you're right. You might be right, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. It, I, thought, I thought that was kind of interesting, considering this movie came out approximately, I don't know, six years, give or take, before your first Ghostbusters. So Star Wars had the first proton packs. I, you, you could be right, actually. Um, unless these are real things that I'm not aware already exist. Well, I, I don't know if their proton pack is is whatever he hands Mala, because if it is, then what he hands her is, is we'll find out later. It's kind of just like a record player. Like pretty much every, everything that they, there's like little gift that these people get in this movie is basically some, some form of record player or tape player. And he's again, for like the 50th time, he's just reassuring these Wookiees that Chewbacca is going to make it home for life day. And he sets itchy up with, I'm glad we got to this point now. This is a really weird moment if this was i mean as as weird as and st- as maybe as as the the uh, the different unique stylistic choices they took for this movie and casting people and creating sort of creating these characters in this world um they made different cho- made v- very interesting choices as far as you'd be like oh th- i i didn't see how this is for kids but like when this scene comes up here i'm like is is grandpa having mind sex i believe so <laughs> what is going on here so this is basically VR, virtual reality, uh, soft, I guess I wouldn't call it soft core porn because there's not really anything sexual going on, but it's just a, basically, it starts off with what I thought. I thought grandpa was hallucinating. Yeah, it's a kaleidoscope. He's just dropping acid. Yeah, until uh, Diane Carroll finally appears on the screen. And she basically just kind of starts talking about how she's in his mind and she's his desire. And, you know, you can look at me all you want because you made me and visualize me. Yeah, and she's speaking very softly and kind of sensually. The whole thing, it's supposed to be very sexual. That's what it seems like. And, like, Grandpa is just sitting there getting his little jollies off. Yeah. Would you expect, like, near Christmas time, you're sitting down to watch our Star Wars special with your kids. Would you expect (laughs) to hear this? I'm getting your message. Are you getting mine? (laughs) Oh, oh, we are excited, aren't we? (laughs) What is going on? (laughs) Like, what in the hell were they thinking? (laughs) I I don't know. Uh, That's a good, like, again, why? So after Grandpa's done getting his jollies off, we're (laughs) back to... uh, (laughs) We're back to the Commodore 64, and this time we get to see what 3CPO and Princess Leia are up to. And we get the exact same conversation that we've seen like five or six times already. Which means, where's Chewie? He's late for life day. And then they say, oh, don't worry. Chewie will be home. You know Han Solo. And... You know, that three minutes of nonsense, you can just sum it up with Leia saying, look after my friends. Bye bye. Have a nice life day. <laughs> You're my number one customer. <laughs> <laughs> Dozen red roses. And then we're back to the Wookiee treehouse again. And this time, some Imperial troopers have shown up. Uh, a, a impor- imperial guards and some stormtroopers. And Sean Don is basically putting on his best little auctioneer type voice rant. 
and just blabbering and blabbering about these different gadgets that he makes that really make no sense at all. Specifically, a leather case that can hold your identification, which I feel like is such a not futuristic thing to go on about. Yeah, it's called a wallet. <laughs> like, And then it's so weird, too. Like, um, He's trying to be inconspicuous. This guy is the most conspicuous, inconspicuous person I've ever seen. Like, he's he's such a heat score. That's all this guy, like, if any, I mean, I know that the guards can't shoot anyways, but aren't they a little bit smarter than this? Well, you know, Paul, in the very first Star Wars movie, they built a Death Star with one weakness that could blow up the entire Death Star. Just a little tiny hole. Yeah, that's, well, they, they talked about it. Remember they, in Family Guy, Stewie's like, can we just put a piece of plywood over it or something? Or they're like, no, no, don't worry about it. <laughs> He's like, are, are you serious? Like, come on, man. Like, I think we should do something about this. So these guards are walking around and yeah, every time this guy, like anytime anybody talks to him, all the student troopers pull out their guns and put them in whoever's face of whoever just spoke. <laughs> like these guys are just like trigger happy. Lumpy kind of runs off and then Don Sean here walks over to one of the uh, Imperial guards that is sitting down and kind of encourages him to use this little TV device that he has. One of the gifts that he brought for the Wookiee family. Which looks like a sewing machine, by the way. It does look like a sewing machine. It's a sewing machine with the, with the computer screen. Yeah. And we don't actually get to see the screen of it. We're just seeing like the back of this sewing machine. And then on our screen, we see this Jefferson Starship music video. Yeah. Again, so like it's everything that these people have. I know this is supposed to be space, but it just seems like every sort of piece of technology in this treehouse only plays music or does something with music. It puts out a band and you get to see the band or you just get to hear some music or you just uh, you talk to somebody. So it's not that really. I mean, it's not really that futuristic. It's it's kind of weird. So Jeff, so when I was watching the music video here, I like there's a lot of this that I was just like, I have to skip through this. So I would just blast ahead through the musical numbers because I just it's I would watch about 40 seconds of like, I got it. I get what's going on here. Don't worry about it. Um, but when I was watching Jefferson Starship go here, the guitar player. He, I just noticed he's kind of dressed like if anybody's seen um, Spinal Tap, he's dressed like their bass player, Derek Smalls. He looks almost <laughs> identical to, to Derek Smalls. He's got he's got a collar on and the big mustache and the long hair and no shirt. Like he was just missing a harness. That's really all he needed. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what, I, that's what I thought was happening at first. I thought it was a joke. And I was like, oh, my God. I, I was like, I clued in again. I'm like, this is the late 70s. Like, they're serious. There's, this is a serious band. So after that music video is over, Sean Don is kind of still wandering around the house trying to peddle his gadgets and distract the Imperial Guards here from discovering that they are actually related to Chewbacca because the only thing they say is that they're here looking for an adult Wookiee. Maybe that's, maybe you're right. Maybe they don't have, maybe Baca isn't a last name because they would be looking. They're like, oh, you're the Harry, this is the Baca family's house. You're uh, you're Lumpy Baca and this is Itchy Baca and whatever. We're looking for Chewbacca, <laughs> right? So maybe that's right. So uh, otherwise they would, would be a little more, because you think they would know if, if they're walking around houses, you, I'm just saying, you, you think you would know who the guy's family is of the person. If you would, you would have to know who you're looking for. And then you probably know who their family is. Yep. Next up, we got Lumpy going over to one of his toys, I guess. Or I don't know. This might be one of the gifts that Sean Don left. And he's just decided to play with it now. And he puts on a, bear, a pair of headphones. And this contraption is just like every other one. It's another TV. Yeah. It's, a, it's TV or music. That's all you get in this space world. Yeah. And this one plays a cartoon. And it's just about a 15 minute long Star Wars cartoon. This this doesn't make any sense. I mean, like I, this, this entire movie doesn't make any sense. But how do they have a, how do they live in a world where they have a cartoon of 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 the Star Wars characters? This is where I almost got my mind into a little bit of a paradox knot. Where, yeah. What? How do, do they live in a world like, OK, so if they have a cartoon. With these people, you think they would know? Okay, wait, we, we got we, we we got to specify here that the cartoon, the Star Wars cartoon that he's watching, is actually what's happening in this Star Wars special. If you, ha I'm just saying, if, if you live in a, a Star Wars world where you have a Star Wars cartoon on a cassette, and their names are Han and Chewbacca and Luke, like the the guards would know who Chewbacca is, and they, they shouldn't should be hard to find them. Yeah, like come on, come on. They're giving away all their secrets. What is this? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Lumpy, Lumpy is watching, is is in the present watching a cartoon of currently what is happening in the present. 
Wrap your wrap your mind around that. And this is a really seventies cartoon too. This looks like um, Schoolhouse Rock uh, animation, kind of. It, it does. Uh, it kind of at some points it kind of reminds me of uh, heavy metal. Yeah, that's I would, that's uh, totally heavy metal. That's that's another good comparison. I thought about that too, absolutely. And then what when they walk a couple times though, it seems like it's like uh, Scooby Doo. They have the, they just kick their legs out and the rest of their body doesn't move properly. It's before they really got the animation down solid. Han Solo looks especially weird in this. His his face is like a he has like a horse shaped head. <laughs> yes, I was gonna say like Harrison Ford must have been pissed when he saw this. He was like, "Is that what they think I look like? Do they think I look <laughs> like that? that's like it's like it should it's like it should be what a caricature of of a person looks like. It's this not a flattering drawing of 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 Harrison Ford. So the gist of this cartoon is that. Han Solo, Chewie, Luke Skywalker, and Princess Leia, R2-D2, and 3CPO all meet up to find this piece of equipment. I can't remember what the name of it is. And they also run into Boba Fett. And the only thing that's actually worth noting at this po- at this part is that this is actually the very first appearance of Boba Fett in the Star Wars movies, or in the Star Wars universe. Yeah, it's, it's, wait, which one did he come in on, Empire or New Hope? Empire. Empire, okay. The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, yeah. But this is before that, so it's kind of like a, it's a debut character. Well, I think, well, if he was coming out then, so what, Empire's the next one, right? After, um, Correct. So, so then that's what I mean. So then they were probably just like, this is a little teaser, we're going to get you in on the next guy kind of thing, right? Yeah. So I will say that this is probably the high point of this movie, this cartoon. However, it's marginally okay. Like maybe in the seventies, the late seventies, I could see kids being like really into this cartoon, but by today's standards, no way. Oh God, no! Yeah, yeah. no. I mean, like this is this is seventies animation, right? They're just kind of figuring things out and getting it down, and even the just that's why like so all the characters look like they're drawn by different people. Like one guy just drew Chewie, one guy just drew a horse face Harrison Ford, one guy just drew a Leia, and they're all like different animators that do different styles. That's what it almost seems. It's a mishmash. So the cartoon's over. We're back in the treehouse again, and this time the stormtroopers are in Lumpy's room, and they are just absolutely ransacking his bedroom. Yeah, and they're just ripping the the head off his little Bantha toy, and yeah, they, he really has it in for this uh, cow creature thing with with horns. Yeah, it's a. I'm pretty sure. I think it's. I think it's a Bantha. Like I, I'm not a, a Star Wars nerd, but I'm pretty sure that's. You know what the uh, what's those guys named the the Raiders the oh Tus, Tuscan Raiders I think that's what it's called the uh, you know the, those guys that show up in the desert. Yeah, sure, we'll go with that. Oh no, I don't. Ah, uh, no, I don't think so. I think so. We're, someone fact check us on. I don't know. Someone get at us. Yeah, so yeah, someone get back at us with this one and correct us. Get at me. You fact check me, Star Wars people. So after he's done ripping up the toys and ransacking the room, they go downstairs and get really evil, and they make Lumpy clean his room up. <laughs> they go, "It's time to clean your room," and you know it's really sad because Lumpy didn't make that mess. Yeah, they're just a bunch of power trippers. But you know what? He doesn't even really clean up his room anyways. He kind of starts to, and then he puts on this really weird video because... Okay, yeah. So he's comforting... He comforts his animal first. He puts the animal in the, his stuffed animal in his bed and puts a blanket over it. And then he wanders around the room and starts grabbing things. And because we don't speak Wookiee and there's no captions, you have no idea what's going on. I had to actually look this one up on Wikipedia to try and understand what's happening. Because basically, we he watches this video, this instruction video that tells him how to build a device. And they don't actually say what this device is. It's like a transmitter or something, I think. It's a, tra- what it is, it's a it's a um, translator of some sort. Oh, that's right, yeah. But it looks like a typewriter with a bunch of weird little knobs. Yeah, little knobs and little lights and sparkles. And and then, and then it's funny, because the guy pulls out this little bag and he's just like, here's your tools that you'll need. And he's like, make sure you save this bag. And it, it's basically, it's a plastic sandwich bag. Like, <laughs> it's not space at all. It's a plastic sandwich bag. So he's telling them how to put this device together. And the 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 uh, video that Lumpy is watching is basically like a, v- a worn down VHS video. So he's constantly like kind of slowing down and speeding up for no reason as if there's like, you know, some wrinkles in the film. What I think it is, is because he like has a screwdriver and he adjusts himself. I think this guy is supposed to be a robot. 
and he is like failing because you see he's glitching out from time to time. Oh shoot! You're 100 percent right. He's an android. Look at him because he's doing oh. he's doing the robot moves right there, and he's slapping his ass going, hey, 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 whatever he's doing. Okay, yeah, it's 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 so bizarre. Like I didn't I, I didn't get that he was a robot. There's one point he does like a tongue flick thing too. It's so creepy. He goes with his tongue like it's his. It is the last thing you would want anybody to do to anyone on screen during a, a children's a children's Christmas episode. Like again, who wrote this? Who do you thought this was good for kids? You just go. Uh, oh yeah, so he's just malfunctioning. He's just like malfunctioning and stuff. Yes, that's exactly what's happening. And that's so. That's the same guy. That's the chef that we saw a little bit ago. And he doesn't actually explain how to put this thing together. He sort of like just dies. Well, doesn't die, but like his, his circuitry fails, and he sort of his batteries run out. Yeah, and he like falls <laughs> off the screen, but. Somehow Lumpy just puts this thing together anyways. Yeah. And I don't believe they actually said what he was putting together. I mean, we find out what it is here shortly, but they don't say it. So you're watching this scene for like, and this goes on, like we're just glossing over this. This goes on for like, it feels like 10 minutes. Yeah. We're saving you a lot of heartache. And you have, and you're just hearing Lumpy doing his and grunts and going on like that. And this weird robot. Now, again, I'm pretty sure that this was supposed to be funny. It's really creepy. Yeah. I. Th- it's very creepy. I think it was supposed to be funny. You're probably right. But yeah, it just like came out not not how you would want it to for a kid's Christmas special. But anyways, meanwhile, downstairs on the TV, looks like we're getting another broadcast. It looks like some weird, I guess this is supposed to be interplanetary. Well, not interplanetary, but this is supposed to be like, I guess, well, I guess it is. It's like the Federation or whatever they're called. I forget what they're called. You know, the bad guys in Star Wars. The Imperials. Yes. Okay, sure. The Imperials. Whatever. Again, don't get don't get mad at me. But um, the, the, the bad guys in this, they're, uh, they're blasting out some sort of space propaganda. And they're kind of showing you a scene of what they're saying basically like be thankful for what's happening here that it's nice and peaceful because other places aren't that good but then they show you Tatooine I think it is but they just go to a bar and nothing bad happens in this at all this is the the reason why this bar is in here because this is the cantina the famous cantina from the Star Wars movie it's it's a <laughs> it's that canteen yeah exactly remember in, in again family guy who's just like play that one song again and it's like a, it's a place where there's like bad guys and criminals go obi-wan described it as a r- it's a hive of scum and villainy oh good job come on i know that i know you I know mean, something how did you because <laughs> well, like i say like Maybe we'll get to it later, but like, I mean, I've watched every Star Wars movie. I used to watch, especially the original trilogy. I watched them all when I was a kid. I, I My favorite is Empire Strikes Back, I will say. I think that's the best one out of all of the Let's Star talk Wars about that. Let's talk about that after. So guess who's running the cantina? It's B. Arthur. And we get the same guy that was just on there again, Henry Corman. This is his third... <laughs> His third appearance? Oh, I didn't even realize it was the same guy. Wow. Yeah. With it just like barely within like five minutes of each other, he's just playing a different character in a completely different scene. Yeah. And he's got a volcano haircut. Well, because he has a giant, the top of his head is a hole. Yeah. It's again, really disgusting and creepy. I, I, went, I, I just want to wait because I just want to describe that and say. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, don't, we, we don't have to describe that, but can we just talk about what – can we just explain to people what this guy looks like in a kid's show, what this man looks like? He looks like I, – I would describe it as – have you ever seen the cone heads? Yes. It's like one of the cone heads with a portion of the top of their head cut off flat, and he has Hulk Hogan gray hair going around the top of it, and he has – a very pointy prosthetic nose, and he's, and he's incredibly creepy. He hitting on B. Arthur, and he's got like a weird orange looking face, and I think he's got like six fingers too. He does because he well he does have six fingers because he says over and over. Ever since you said those six simple words to me, I just can't get you out of my mind. He's just fawning over B. Arthur here, and it's super creepy. And the reason why he has six hands is because he goes six simple words. Come back soon. I'll be waiting. Which I'm sure she says that to every single person who leaves her bar. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, if, if like, this is a kid's movie. So if you just picture, like, this is supposed to be a movie for kids. And there's a guy with a weird orange face and a volcano haircut um, with a, a weird sort of hook nose and s- six fingers on each hand. It, this is, it's a really creepy, sinister, ugly looking dude. Like, I don't see how this is, A, Christmas related or B, children friendly. She basically tells him, hey, no, I'm not interested in you. I say that to everybody. 
and just gives him a free drink. And she pours her pitcher of drink. This is like a, this looks like your regular pitcher of juice. She dumps it in the top of his head. And the noise that it makes when it's pouring into the top of his head sounds identical to a toilet flushing. Why? When they made this character, when they made any of this, why? Why did you do this? You know, it's just, why would you design this guy to look? It, it, just blow, it blows my mind. It blows my mind. My mind is blown. It's, it's short circuiting out again while we're watching this because it's just like, <laughs> what the hell? What is happening? They find out here at the bar that there is an immediate curfew due to a subversive force, which I assume is Han Solo and Chewie. I don't know. But everybody on Tatooine has to go home right now. And everyone at the bar is really sad. And no matter what B. Arthur tries to do, nobody will leave. And she decides to sing them a song because they all just start slamming their mugs down at the same time in unison. And she starts singing a song to the melody of this famous cantina song that we know. Is that what that's supposed to be? Is that what the melody is supposed to be? Absolutely. So, okay, because like, yeah, because she's basically handing out what looks to be Coca-Cola's and Mountain Dew's. One last round for everybody. And yeah, so she's handing out these like these drinks that look like Coca-Cola's and Mountain Dew's. And she's singing this song that to me, I thought was basically the Star Wars equivalent to Closing Time by Semisonic. I think that's basically what this is. Closing time. Like that's, I, I don't, I like, she's just basically trying to usher everyone out of this bar through song. That's, there's no, so maybe, maybe you can explain this to me. Cause, or, or, or like, do you, or, do you feel like you've have everything you need to say about this, this scene right now? Or I was just going to say that I'm really impressed with B. Arthur's effort. Like she is really trying. Like she seems like she is actually trying to. Like, she might be aware of how stupid this is, and she, but she's doing her best. <laughs> so, you know, good for B. Arthur. Uh, she, well, I mean, she probably got a good check for this. I would hope so, anyways. So here's my question to you, then. So basically, she ushers everyone out of the bar, and then she just goes back to the bar, and that weird volcano head guy is still there, like a, a complete psycho. Um, <laughs> like, he just didn't get the hint or something. She pulls out more flowers. So let me ask you, what the hell was the point of that scene? Like, as far as pushing the story forward, what was that? I'm pretty sure that was supposed to be funny. I think that was, I think that was supposed to be another comedy break. You have to, you have to wonder what these writers were like, what, I'd like to know, I should look up, like, what else are they famous for? Because it seems like these people have never written anything before. It's like you said earlier, was this movie written by kids? It's, I feel like maybe they just had someone come up with, like, random skits. They just said, you're going to do a skit. You're going to write something for B. Arthur. You're going to write a skit. You're going to do something for this guy. But like, here's the setting. Here's the setting. Go. And nowhere in between did they think about linking these things up at all. After we get this scene, the guards and the Imperial, whatever they are, the bad guys all basically leave, except they leave one stormtrooper behind. They tell him, stay here and hang out and, and wait and see who comes back. The reason why they leave is because what Lumpy was actually doing is that he made a fake message out of his little his little contraption that he was putting together in the last scene we saw him that sent a fake impersonation of an imperial officer to the downstairs tv transmitter or like or one of these audio devices they have and it was a voice that sounded like their leader telling them to come back home or come back to a home base so that's why they all leave, but they leave one stormtrooper behind. Because right after that, the stormtrooper goes upstairs and he finds out, he realizes what Lumpy's doing. So wait, wait. How did you figure out any of that? I went on Wikipedia. Because <laughs> I, I didn't understand. I was like, because it just drove me crazy. I was like, what is the point of this machine that he has? I was like, I had to figure that out. Like, why did I just see that? So I had to go on Wikipedia. I know, as Michael Scott says, uh, you know, Wikipedia is the best source of information because people from all over the place just write whatever. So, you know, you're getting the best information. But um, how do they how did anybody extrapolate that from that? I feel like someone just made that up and they're like, that's kind of what we think happened. No, I mean, I do understand it after like afterwards. Now, I, I understand it. And I think what it was is because when Lumpy was building this device, we were just hearing him his grunts and groans. And we didn't know what he did. So this was supposed to be the reveal of what he actually did. Okay. Uh, I mean, okay. Uh, I, I have no choice. I guess I'll buy that. Which I kind of wonder anyway, like, wouldn't all the stormtroopers, wouldn't they all come back as soon as they get back to the their their station? 
and they realized that no, it was a lie that they were sent there. So they would just come back and go after these Wookiees. But anyways, we're not, I'm not going to get bogged down too much by that because not a whole lot. It makes about just as much, about as much sense as what you'd expect at this point. This is probably the only part in this show, this entire show, that I actually laughed. This was the only comedy part, comedic, or this was the only comedic part in this entire Christmas special, I felt like. Because now, the Stormtrooper figures out what's going on. He smashes, he snatches a thing out of Lumpy's hand, and Lumpy runs away. And he goes downstairs, and he runs out the front door, and the Stormtrooper runs into Chewie and Han Solo. Chewie is with Lumpy on one side, sort of protecting him. And the, the Stormtrooper doesn't fully see that Han Solo is now sneaking up behind the Stormtrooper. He's not aware of this. And then what happens is the Stormtrooper uh, has the gun slapped out of his hand by Han. And they, he turns and they have this face-to-face -face sort of moment where the Stormtrooper doesn't really do anything. And and Harrison Ford just kind of sidesteps him, fakes a sidestep. And it's then, almost like they're it's almost like they're having a game of tag. Yeah. And like they're like, I'm gonna go this way, I'll block <laughs> you over here. And they kind of like do that little that little dance for a moment. Yeah, and he, he does a little side Harrison Ford does a sidestep, and then it looks like the stormtrooper slips on a, a log, a piece of wood that's like standing outside, and he the, somehow the banister just breaks apart and he falls. And then you get that really bad ADR sound that was in um uh Star Wars where it's like that. You get that. Oh that no! One okay. Scream? No, no. Do you know? Do you know what that is? Oh, the yeah, the will, the Wilhelm scream. What? What will? What? You don't. You, okay. So that is what's known as the Wilhelm scream. I mean, I know the band of Wilhelm scream. So it's by a man named Wilhelm. Way back in, I want to say '58 or something like that. He started in a movie, and I mean, I've heard that scream a hundred times. I'll, I want to. I want to. I want to play you the scream first. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That is the scene of an actor in the movie getting eaten by an alligator. Now, that became, I don't know why, it almost became like an Easter egg for some directors to use. So that scream is a very well-known scream, and George Lucas is known for using it in a lot of his other movies. Uh, also, like in the Raiders of the Lost Ark, when Indiana Jones is like, uh, there's, I, I think he's like on a Jeep or something, and he pulls someone off the Jeep. That person does yes, a Wilhelm yes, scream yes, yes. when he dies. In... Uh, yeah, in the movie Toy Story, the very first one, when Buzz Lightyear gets knocked out of the window into uh, Sid's yard, or maybe just knocked out of the window in general. Uh, yeah, when he when he falls, they do that exact same scream. Yeah, because I, I, I've definitely heard it. I've definitely heard it before. I didn't really know. Oh, that's cool. That's interesting. I didn't know that. And there's one. I believe there is one scream in every single Star Wars movie. I mean, I've definitely heard that in a, bu a bunch. Now you say it, it's like I've, there's a bunch of George Lucas stuff, especially Indiana Jones. I know that. But what that is, that's supposed to be the sound of a man getting eaten by a crocodile. <laughs> okay. Or an alligator. Okay. Right on. And that, that this honestly was the only funny part in this movie. I was like, <laughs> that was cool. And that's, that's it. And because it, it just it looked so bad. And honestly, it really does. It, it really does look like Harrison Ford. The when you when you see him in this, it looks like he's pissed off. It really does. He looks like he's just like I'm like when he's delivering this line, he's just like I'm here. I'm delivering some lines. I'm getting paid. Let's get out of here. Especially considering that, like, of all the uh, Star Wars characters to make appearance in, in this one, uh, Han Solo has the most screen time. And I want to say it probably has something to do with, like, I think Star Wars was his first movie. Oh, really? Yeah, he was um, George Lucas's carpenter in his office. What? Really? Yeah, no no joke. Yeah, he, he was his, Harrison Ford was a carpenter. And I guess he was talking to George Lucas while he was working, and George Lucas felt that he would be a good fit for Han Solo. Wow, that's in, that's incredible! I did not know that. Yeah, so so oh yeah, and you know th that's not a bad place to start in your first role, right? Started from the bottom, now he's here. So and then of course of course he was cast in uh, you know as Andy Indiana Jones, and the rest is history. Andy, yeah, he's the man. That's it. So apparently the Imperial fleet. And the stormtroopers leaving, as well as the uh, one stormtrooper being dead at the bottom of the treehouse, um, that's enough to make them all feel better, and they're a happy family again. Han Solo gives a, a very awkward goodbye where he's hugging the Wookiees, uh, and right before uh, right before Han Solo leaves, he tells them, you know, watch out because they're going to be coming back looking for this guy, and then they leave, and I'm like. He's dead at the bottom of your house, like on the ground. <laughs> Shouldn't you like hide his body or something? 
Yeah, at least go drag it like, you know, underneath someone else's treehouse, right? Because it's like they're just going to look up and go, oh, uh, did, did he fall from there? After he leaves, we get this incredibly awkward part where Chewbacca and his wife share. Well, I guess at first his family are all hugging, but then Chewbacca and his wife share this really cringy, awkward, intimate moment where they're holding each other and staring each other and smelling each other. It's like, yeah, well, it's like if it's that's a weird moment. If basically if, if you had two Harry and yep. the Hendersons <laughs> and you're trying to do this weird, <laughs> this romantic moment, like. <laughs> yeah. And so then they kissed and then they hugged. And then at this point, I was really happy because I was like, awesome, this is over. And then there's a knock at the door. And I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Son of a bitch. There's more. Fortunately for Chewbacca and his family, it's Sean Don back again. I don't know what in the world he's doing, but he's back there again. And he comes in and immediately they get a call from the Imperial Guards and they want to, they're checking in with the stormtrooper that stayed behind, not knowing that he's dead on the ground below them. And Sean Don steps in to give them this really weird lie. He says, oh, that stormtrooper? Yeah, he just grabbed all of our food, robbed me blind, and headed for the hills. And then the Imperial Guard is like, oh, darn. Okay, we'll send a search party. Bye. Um, like, he can, they can see each other, can't they? Yeah. So, I mean, maybe they don't know what, maybe they just don't know what Chewbacca looks like, but. No, you know why? I think it's because of that leather id wallet thing that he had because right after that he takes a card out of his leather wallet and he goes and that's why everybody should have an identification card so i'm just saying they can see each other right yeah as far as i know he can see them so he can see chewbacca in the back do they not know what they're they know what they're looking for chewbacca right like i'm pretty sure according to them they used this identification card and then so that made them believe the lie. I don't know. I don't makes no sense. No. Okay. So and, and, and then I just I, I thought about this now too, because um, this is just a tree fort, right? And it looks really high up in the air. How, do you think there's like a ladder, or do you think that they just like they land and they they like because where where do they park their ships and what kind of ships are they flying? Because like what Chewie they they fly in the like Chewie and, and Han flying that Millennium Falcon. That's like it's a pretty decent size, right? I don't think the tree fort can support that. It's hard to say. The only image that we get of this tree fort is very similar to like a high school, a high school uh, play. With it's just it's just a backdrop. It's just a painting. How does everyone get up this place? Like I'm just saying, like if if you can't you can't just roll up here with six guys in a ship. So you could at least put a lock on your little hatch when they get up there or something. Make it a little bit harder. So then, after Sean Dawn leaves and wishes them all a happy life day, they all go over to the couch. And they get their snow globes. And at this point, I got really excited because I was like, thank God this is over. And it's not over. So, so from this, th from, from, from here, they kind of go into a really bizarre space setting. If you've ever seen the video, the music video for Bohemian Rhapsody... It's basically, it's, it's, it looks just like that, only it's a few Wookiees standing next to each other in, in robes. And then, in this image of space, on the very left, there's this giant ball of light, and all these Wookiees are just marching behind each other in a cult-like fashion, because they're all wearing these giant red gowns, and holding snow globes, and they're walking into the light. Yeah, we're, we're going to some sort of um, eyes wide shut space ceremony now, basically. Yeah. By the way, the reason why they're wearing all these red ro these red robes is because they didn't have enough money for the Wookiee costumes. <laughs> they had enough money for they had enough money to give everybody a mask, but not enough for the rest of the, the uh, costumes. I guess they blew it all on the uh, the three Wookiees from Chewbacca's family. I don't know. So right after all these Wookiees go into the light, the whole screen goes black, and you'd think the movie is over, but it's not over. This is just like Lord of the Rings Return of the King. Like, in every time you think it's going to be done, it's like, oh, no, we got something else to show you. And this, I don't even know. This is so hard to even describe. I don't know where they are because they all just walked into this giant light, but there's a bunch of, uh, it's basically a 
cult of of Wookies standing all around. Uh, R two D two and C three PO are there, and they have some really corny lines. Like I think three C PO goes on about how he wishes that he wasn't a robot so he could have feelings like these guys do. It's like he just feels bad that he can't or wants to be like them, which I kind of thought that. I think being jealous is a human feeling. I'm surprised that our, <laughs> that three CPO gets jealous, but whatever. I'm being that's way too nitpicky right now. By this time in the movie, there's like six minutes. There's like four minutes left. I was really just tuning a lot of stuff out. I was like, get me to the finish line of this. Oh, me too. I I was every twenty seconds, or at least what I felt like every two minutes. I would look, I would move my mouse to see how much was left, and I was really only like. 20 seconds ahead from the last time I checked. And I did that over and over and over. The whole gang shows up, meaning um, Han Solo, Princess Leia, and, and uh, Luke Skywalker. And Princess Leia goes into this, uh, I guess, wholesome rant about how no matter how different we all are, we're all the same, we're all human, everybody should be treated the same, which is, I guess that's a nice message. And then she kind of breaks out into uh, this makeshift christmas song so you know and carrie fisher can sing i mean she's actually not a bad singer but this song is not a good song either <laughs> so i don't really know what much i don't know what else to say about it but yeah we get a song from uh, princess leia and then it, it zooms in there's this really awkward moment where it just zooms in on chewbacca's face he's not smiling it actually looks scary if you were to see this with no sound, you would probably be terrified. And as it gets closer to his face, we start to get a whole bunch of images of what I assume Chewbacca is thinking about. And all these clips are scenes from the first Star Wars movie. So here on Life Day, Chewbacca is thinking about everything that happened in the movie that just came out a year prior. When they freeze on Chewbacca's face, it's just an expression where, he, he again, he looks really high. <laughs> There's like you just look it looks like a really stoned Wookiee staring into nothing. And also too, I gotta say, like, just staring at that face, the muzzle on it, he's it's a weird looking face Chewbacca has. Like it looks like he has a mustache almost because the front of his muzzle, there's no fur on it, just under his nose, and it's just dark. It's just dark, like a dark skin tone color. It lo- it looks it looks like a weird mustache, like or he, or he shaved off the hair on his lip. Then after all that, finally it fades to dark. But it's still not over. This thing is still going. It fades to dark, and then it fades back into another scene, and we are at back at the Wookiee house, and all the Wookiees are sitting around the table with their snow globes all sitting in the middle, and they're all holding hands, and they're just getting close to each other, holding hands and staring, and it's really awkward, and it looks more like a seance to me than it does like a prayer, but I assume that they're, they're praying and giving thanks or something. But this looks like a Wookiee seance. Yeah, it's I, yeah. They're I guess they're praying to the Force or something. And thank God, because now that's the movie. I got my first Christmas wish granted. This movie <laughs> finally ended. Holy crap! Yeah, that was. This was okay. So yeah, this is over now. Thank God, because this was a this was a hard one to get through. You know, I um I remember you saying that uh, a lot of people. Have, have like you you said this was gonna be a tough one and man like there's no joke about that like you were bang on the money with that this was a tough one this was really really bad I had only ever like previously to viewing this movie right I've only seen the uh, first thirty minutes of it and I knew that was bad enough so this is my actual first time watching the whole thing in its entirety and even knowing what I was getting into I could. I was I spent a week watching this in five minute increments just because I could not handle the amount of Wookiee noises and just the overall nonsense of whatever this was supposed to be. Yeah, this is I mean, I, you can definitely see why they just shelved it and never wanted this to see the light of day. Hey, what did you think this was going to be about before you watched it? Um, Honestly, I didn't know. I thought I, th- I figured it was going to be something about maybe off something about the holidays maybe like sort of i guess it's hard to say now playing um like trying to go back with that but you know i figured maybe there would be something to do with the holidays and and you know they they, someone's got to get somewhere and do something i don't know (laughs) that's a fair guess it's a holiday special something related (laughs) to the holidays yes other than some 
some made up thing, you know? What like I, I don't know. What, what what about you? Before I watched this or ever seen any of it, I heard that this was supposed to be really bad. So my first guess, way back before I seen it, I thought that it was going to be Darth Vader trying to steal Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I felt like I okay. felt like that was a pretty reasonable guess. Yeah, that's 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 actually that that kind of makes sense. <laughs> yeah, like Darth Vader's the Grinch, and go from there. Honestly, I would be way more in, interested in watching that movie <laughs> with Darth Vader going, "No Christmas." <laughs> yeah, I could see that. Or they they did like a crossover with like the Grinch, and he's having like a lightsaber battle. That would have been kind of interesting. I could never, I'm not going to uh, recommend anybody ever watch this movie. What I do suggest as, as a test to yourself and your tolerance and what you're willing to sit through, I challenge anybody to watch this movie, even 15 minutes of it. I challenge anybody to do it. <laughs> it's hard. Just watch, sit there and actually you can't, like, here's a challenge, really. Put your phone in the other room. You're not allowed to look at your phone. Yeah. <laughs> you have to sit on a screen and f- physically with your eyeballs look at this movie and actively listen and pay attention for at least 15 minutes it's pretty hard i think a lot of people will be reaching for alcohol within minute three what else do we have to say god don't don't do yourself a favor just listen to this podcast and don't watch it that's basically it that's what i would advise i would advise you just to never Never watch it. Unless you're a really hardcore Star Wars fan, then you actually might kind of find this somewhat interesting or fun or amusing. Or or if you're a sadist. Yeah, that too. Or you're just a heavy drinker. So you've heard our warnings. We're going to leave you with one more warning from one of the uh, cast members of Star Wars, the man who played C-3PO. And when asked what he thought of the Star Wars holiday special, here's his warning for you. You will die if you watch it. <laughs> You will die if you watch it. <laughs> All right. Well, let's just leave it there. Have you know, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, everybody. You're getting ready here. Um, before we go, we should just mention again, just because, you know, we're gonna hit, we got to hit it home. Just let everybody know. We're, we're on social media. Okay. We're on Instagram. Come follow us. Uh, good times with bad movies. And, uh, you know, Tim and I also have our own accounts. You can check us out and see what we're doing for fun, too. Um, we're also on YouTube. We post clips from the show. If you don't want to listen to the whole episode, just little clips here and there. We got little taste, little funsies. Little, uh, little, little, little things for you to listen to. Yeah, we're also on YouTube. Um, you know, we post little clips from the show. Check us out. Let us know what you think. Like, subscribe, and uh, get back at us. And let us know what you guys think of this movie too. Merry Christmas, Paul. Merry Christmas, Tim. Ah!